Beef is a protein staple in almost every Nigerian home. Using Lagos as a case study, there is a high demand for beef by the 22 million estimated population of the city. Can you imagine rice and plantain without beef, or a typical meal of amala, or fufu, without beef? Also, to the more exotic and processed uses of shredded meat, it is obvious that there is a huge appetite for beef in Lagos. So, where does the meat come from? Some of them came from Chad, Cameroon, Cote d'Ivoire, Sudan, Mauritania, Kenya, and uh, Niger as well. Plus the one we have in Nigeria here. While our investigation in this video series would not make your beef any tastier, if you are like us however, it may interest you to know that your next serving of beef is probably two countries away, two days away, or in fact your beef just overtook you in traffic in a white pickup vehicle. Next time you see the Eco Meat van, give it right of way. You may be playing your part in helping your next beef meal arrive earlier. You might have wondered and be right either way if you thought the cows just take a stroll to slaughter or arrive in companies of large trucks, then pass through a process before landing in your pot of stew. Over a couple of days, we met people who have been at the business for over 40 years, some born into the trade, and just like every professional endeavor, we learned there are skills required at each level of the system. We met the army of buyers, caregivers, butchers, and other key players responsible for the timely and hygienic entry of your favorite protein right into that delicious meal at home, the restaurant, or at the mesuya down the road from your house. We learned that the local cows arrive in big trucks all the way from northern Nigeria and sometimes from about seven other countries. That is the highest place we have for a cow. That is Nigeria and Nigeria here is made This market we have about seven countries that they used to bring cow. So we have Cameroon, we have Chad, we have Niger, we have South uh, Central Africa. For so about seven countries they used to bring their cows here. But normally, this our cow is from Katsina Street. Either way, the resident merchants and the markets create a converging point for the incoming cows, as well as a dispersed point to Lagos and many other destinations. For this story, we will be tracing the route to Lagos. The journey starts when they are loaded into the truck. Before the trailer are packed, they are already put in a place. Military of the trailer are packed at the loading side of this, they now just push them. You see a lot of people get at them, pursuing them to fix. They will just enter the trailer. If there was no hold up, there was no hold up. And the motor didn't get any faulty along the road. A matter of two days, they will arrive in Lagos. But when there is hold up, sometimes to take it up to three, four, five days, depending on the situation, of, I mean, depending on the hold-up. On arrival in Lagos, the cows do not go straight to slaughter. From this point, the various roles get to work. The people who take the cows for grazing on arrival are called... That is make you number one. So when they come back, we can hand over those cows to the lily. You understand? When did the lily put them to the market, is sell them. You understand? And we have uh, Mekama. Mekama will take it to the slab. This is the slaughterhouse. Because of the diverse cultural mix of people who work at the abattoirs, some roles may have different names. But no one is confused about the roles. After the slaughter, the Eco Meat van picks it up from the abattoirs and distributes to the markets. We have uh, a, a period where diseases are common transport is spread, being spread. But as a result of the hygienic situation, we are the government want to introduce into the meat transportation system. The government now about this, the project is almost six years old now, almost six years old. So that used to be the means of transportation. All recreative vehicles, you know, the government now came up with an idea that we should use 
registered and certified vehicles to convey slaughtered cows, meat to various market in Lagos. A different set of professionals cut and sell to direct buyers. These are the retailers. So, at my best, you know, Lori Duo, but oh, I share, share, me. I want to know, I'm a failure. So, you can get your share. So, if you fail, you come on, why you're going to get away. Tabar and 350. I can get you up at that all. So, my short, you got me. I like 10 on 3 on the cap of 280, cap of 290. Only short. You don't know about my more, I didn't know more than that. The 320, the 310. At every stage, you have a deep family history, like this man who was born into it. Or the herder, who doesn't even know when he got into the business. The, the time where I enter, I don't know the time because of my my papa is get that. My papa professor is get that name. This other man tells us how his family and his entire neighborhood is dedicated to the business. <laughs> From this point, the buyers exchange the meat for cash, and the rest is between the buds and the stomach. They are very nice here, yeah. and the price, of, the rate of their price here, yeah. the rate of their price here yeah, is not too high, and it's because of the surroundings where I live. So the place I live is not too far from here. So I can't I can leave the Korodu and go to the back to go and buy me. So it's not compulsory. That is why I normally come here to buy me. And that's how your favorite beef moves from Cameroon, Central Africa, and a host of other countries through Katsina, or from Katsina for the local breeds. There are a lot of other interesting facts around the cows which the consumer is completely oblivious to. For instance, it may interest you to learn that the delicacy of your beef meal is not only dependent on the seasoning ingredients, but the breed of the cow. And fortunately, the breed from Katsina are the best. The best meat you can have is from Bokolo. Bokolo. That is Nigerian cow. The one we have in Nigeria here. The one we have real in Nigeria here. Because naturally, that's how we go to uh, create them. Both the male and female ones, they look different from other cows. Then, after them, it was a uh, curry. Mostly that one, they has, the one that has that long horn, big head, and they're normally tall inside. Mohammed Bello, a herdsman, operates from a completely different angle. He buys the calves, takes care of them for about two years, sells to the buyers, and just like those that come all the way from Katsina, it ends up on the table too. Belo walks his cows around Lagos, and he's been here for about seven years. And it's quite impressive when Muhammad told us that he knows his cows by face. He doesn't even need to mark or count them. I, I go look them. Even though I never count them, if I look them, if you know that one, know the inside, I go know. It's just like you have been maybe 10, 15 children at home. When you see them in terms of people, uh, children like them, you'll be able to identify them because you know them quite well, that this is my own blood, this is my own children. Even from far distance, you see them, yeah, that is Mohammed, oh, that is Abakar for me, that's my child. One may wonder why all these cows are not ranched in Lagos. There are a few ranches, but we are told a couple of reasons why. Uh, the reason why we don't uh, rear uh, cows here in Lagos is because, uh, because of the weather. Some of the animals, they are not accustomed to the weather of Lagos. Apart from the one that we have 
uh, a place like Chad because they are already into water. The one that came from Cameroon, they are used to warm the, warm the area. So even if they come to Lagos, they, it would have less effect to them because they are already used to the same weather. Every day, another set of hundreds of cows will be heading to Lagos. Now we know how the beef makes it from the stable to the table. In this story, we follow the money on the beef. First, we look at the money path until the cow arrives in Lagos through the various business models available. Usman the herder buys the young cows and trains them until they are old enough to sell. Usman doesn't ranch his cows, he herds them to feed. With his herd 34 cows strong, he makes a living round the year and he has been doing this in Lagos for a while. Uh, so this was I don't it's like seven years. For not they will be good like a small one will be like 60. 55, small one, go buy and come. So, me, if you are buying and come, so in time, nobody say, I'll sell, I'll go keep up. Before it grow, uh, that time, I'll go sell them. So, in time, person go sell them like um, 160, 170, 180. If you grow, if you big, go with this two, 200. Any cow will reach two years. If you go get some food, the thing where you like, go big, go get body. In, in Joshua, everything you go give him. Medicine different, different. If you go veterinary, go see medicine different, different. Why go give? This means on each cow, Usman makes an estimated 100,000 naira over two years. With a bigger investment, Dangote brings in a lot of cows. The small one, let's say, start up from 100 or 40. And the full grown bigger ones. They are such up from 200 upwards. One trailer, if it is big cow, is containing 35 to 37. 35 big cows at 200,000 is 7 million a trip, including the transportation and other expenses. That comes to about 7,350,000. If all cows survive to Lagos, Dangote should make a profit of 5,250,000 on each trip. He can repeat the trips a couple of times within a month. Between the markets in the far north where all six countries import cows and the destination to Lagos, a lot of transactions have happened from the merchants, the truck drivers, loaders, the crew that tends the cows in Lagos, the medical team and so on. This is quite a hectic chain of business estimated at hundreds of millions of naira daily. Number 
Maybe I eat a pain on you. Bon, I do pay for long. It's a long time to call on my So I'm not touching my portion. Bon. Besides the direct labor and the beef for food, the horns, hides, and dungs of the animals are commodities sought out by recycling or repurposing businesses. This hasn't turned out to be quite a big business yet. <laughs>